think uh, Megalodon could still be out there. I mean, uh, we know more about distant galaxies than we do about our own oceans. Animal X investigates the weird world of animal mysteries. First, a shark like no other, a mighty predator of massive proportions. The shark, one of the most feared yet fascinating creatures on Earth. Modern day great whites are awesome. But imagine a super shark the size of a whale, the ultimate terror lurking in the deep. It is not some Hollywood myth. Megalodon was the greatest sea monster that ever lived. Growing to more than 65 feet and weighing 60 tons, it was up to four times the size of an average great white. Mighty Meg had a mouth full of razor-sharp teeth, some seven inches high, the size of a human hand. It is said that Megalodon could devour prey the size of a small car in just one bite. The question is, did this prehistoric killing machine die out along with the dinosaurs, or could its fearsome form still be cruising our oceans today? I think uh, Megalodon could still be out there. I mean, uh, we know more about distant galaxies than we do about our own oceans. Very much the T-Rex of the ocean, but uh, uh, like T-Rex, it doesn't seem to be around. To investigate the mystery surrounding this giant Jurassic shark, Animal X travels to South Africa and the United States. First stop, Beaufort, South Carolina, to meet Mr. Megalodon. Vito Bertucci is known as the Megalodon Man. He claims to have constructed the world's biggest Megalodon jaw with authentic teeth. For decades, this fossil hunter from Beaufort, South Carolina, has combed the world's ocean floors in his search for evidence. It took about uh, 26 years to get the teeth. And then it took four years to actually match them up and build the frame and put them in. It's uh, not something you do overnight. Bertucci's obsession has at times been a dangerous one. Right in this same spot, I had a big tiger shark uh, take the end of one of my fins off. And then on another day, uh, I was diving with my friend Bill and the big tiger shark uh, bit the tank a few times and then I poked him with my screwdriver and he took off and swam into Bill and dislocated his shoulder. Florida author Steve Alton has written two fictional thrillers about mighty Megalodon. Alton believes this super predator still has a food source and the perfect hiding place, a warm, deep abyss called the Mariana Trench. And we're talking about uh, a 1,500 mile long gorge in the Western Pacific. Uh, it's never been explored. A man has only been down there twice and just to touch bottom and come up again, and it's seven miles deep. A submarine tracked some really large uh, readings in the trenches off of Puerto Rico. And they assumed it was a large whale, but they followed it for over seven hours, and there's no whale that could stay down that long. And the submarines can go to depths of over 3,000 feet, and the whale actually got deeper than they could go with a nuclear submarine and they continued to track it for several hours even after it went below their maximum depth. And there's no way it could have been a whale, so what was it? But Dr. John Long, a paleontologist and curator of vertebrate fossils at the Western Australian State Museum, says it's highly unlikely this specialized super shark would have saved itself from extinction by moving into deep sea. Basically, great whites today um, are top water sort of predators. They don't live at great depths. 
So it's a bit ridiculous to think that similar sorts of sharks, ancestors of the great whites, were actually living at great depths because today only very specialised sharks live at depth and they're mostly filter feeders, they're not sort of big carnivores. We know that the great whites in the Mediterranean when the seal population thinned out didn't just disappear, they adapted other food sources such as the tuna and dolphin, creatures that are some of the swiftest creatures in the ocean. If great whites can adapt, why not mingle them? Dr. Leonard Compagno is a world-renowned shark expert. He is head of the Shark Research Center at the South African Museum. Dr. Compagno claims if Meg was still around, there would be graphic evidence. There should be uh, animals that, uh, that uh, strand or wash up that have huge bites in them with, from the adults. And, and there should be interference with, uh, with uh, fishing operations. There should be interference with divers. Over the past century, there have been several reported sightings of megalodon-sized monsters. One of the most famous occurred in 1918. A group of fishermen told an amazing tale of terror of how they believed a hungry Meg ate the day's catch. There was an incident off Australia where uh, the cray fishermen were pulling in these huge traps and this one shark came in and just ate a whole string of traps and they said it was bigger than their boat and their boat was 50 feet. Canadian shark researcher Ben S. Roche has studied so-called megalodon sightings. He believes they can be easily explained. One inscription says a blunt, uh, a square head with some white spots and about 35 feet long or so near the surface matches very well the, the description and lifestyles of a whale shark. I think that uh, it's very dangerous to base scientific theory on conjecture. For instance, just because we haven't seen the sharks doesn't mean that they don't exist. And it's this type of uh, theory uh, that has always led us down the wrong path. For instance, uh, the coelacanth was a species of lobefin fish that was supposed to be extinct 50 million years ago. And yet in 1938, uh, fishermen fished one out of the depths off of South Africa. Despite their differences, megalodon believers and non-believers agree that man and shark should learn to share the sea. Now we're trying to protect great whites and other creatures like them instead of hunting them down and killing them. The sharks have a right to exist, and we now know that the sharks are an integral part of the ocean system, and we really need to preserve them. And it seems respect for these powerful predators, past and present, is well deserved. They were one of the first of the jawed fishes to appear on the earth some 400 million years ago, and they hit on a formula for success that meant they didn't have to change much at all. So sharks of 400 million years ago look very much like sharks of today, and that's a true tribute to their success in evolution. Perhaps in time we may come to learn whether or not this freak of nature is still swimming in our seas. But until then, the mystery will keep many guessing. The mysterious tales of the animal world continue to fascinate and perplex us. After all, it's said there are stranger things in heaven and earth than we can think of. You've just seen some of them on Animal X.